Hello there, everybody. My name is Lou Whelan, and for the last 30 years, I have published the official relocation guide on Atlanta that are distributed by the First Multiple Listing Service of Atlanta. The First Multiple Listing Service of Atlanta is the, the organization and platform that all realtors subscribe to for information, all the listings, and also uh, that, well, that equips them for their work. Uh, there are 56,000 agents that are members and over 3,000 different brokerage firms. And um, we have publications that are, well, five publications that are also on their website. And we have one for different parts of town, one for Atlanta, one for North Fulton, one for Cobb, one for Inside 285, and one for Gwinnett County. And they are on my website and we do distribute them in all the brokerage offices and at the multiple listing service and at chambers of commerce throughout the city. And um, I'm also a realtor, a uh, commercial realtor with KW Commercial, and my main focus of attention is multifamily. If you'd like to reach me, my email is lou at louwhelan.com. And again, the website for the magazines and information, additional information on Atlanta is atlantacommunityprofiles.com. So every week we interview community leaders, and today we are talking about something that everybody is interested in, and that's the interchange at 285 and 400. I doubt if there's anybody in Atlanta, metro <laughs> area, who has not heard of it and has been interested in following its development. In order to have a very comprehensive report on it, we have two guests. Natalie Dale and Marlo uh, Glowers. I hope I pronounced that right. It's, and uh, G, G L O W E R S. And um, Natalie Dale is a graduate of Auburn, as you can see from the plaque in the background there. She's proud of her background and uh, education. She's uh, the currently works as department spokesman most person for the Georgia Department of Transportation. She has worked, uh, she has previously sele been selected by the Engineering Georgia Magazine for their 100 Most Influential Women in Georgia and 50 Women in the No List. And Marlo Glowers, Glowers uh, is a design build program manager for, for the Georgia Department of Transportation in the Office of Alternative Delivery. She currently serves as principal in charge for the Transform 285-400 project. She has a Bachelor um, of Civil Engineering from Georgia Tech and is a Georgia Registered Professional Engineer, a Certified Design Build Professional, and a Project Manager Professional. Welcome to the show. And uh, I guess the, we could start out by just saying that congratulations on the phenomenal project that you're doing and have done. And um, well, I'm, but just we'll start with the end first. When what is the completion, the expected completion date of the project? I guess I, I'll take that. Uh, we will continue to have major openings of ramps um, and collector distributor lanes, which is one of the main uh, focuses of the project uh, throughout 2022, uh, throughout to the end of 2022 and into 2023, there will be work occurring. Well, um, what, um, can you just maybe articulate some of the major benefits of this project and how it serves the community? Well, okay. um, oh, go ahead, Natalie. <laughs> this is where you get when you get two of us, a lot of information here. So yes, um, Marlo has led or continues to lead such an amazing team on this project to deliver all of these. And I, I, what I wanted to say um, in reference to what Marlo had just said about um, the, the sort of as this project comes to, to an end um, is that this project is very different than what we typically see in a really standard GDOT delivered project in that 
Uh, you have such a large footprint, whether that's up and down 400, 285, or in the interchange proper. And we have been for years, uh, for the past few years, delivering pieces of this as it is completed. And that's really different uh, than your standard, just say building a bridge that uh, you don't get any use of until the whole project is completed, you cut the ribbon and it opens. And so um, the project that we're talking about today, what's unique about it uh, is that as ramps are finished, um, as a collector distributor system is finished, as these things sort of um, wrap up in these different quadrants of the project, they open. And so you're getting incremental gains along the way. And so while there's still much work to be done and Marlo um, I can outline that for us, what some of the, the things coming up are, um, that it's important to look at this for its size, but that it, it's not, um, you know, we don't have, we're not moving dirt for, for several years and then no one gets to use anything. What's unique and very beneficial about this project is that as a ramp is finished, it opens. And so we continue to sort of give, deliver these benefits um, weekly, monthly, uh, year, there's there's new things around the corner, new benefits. Um, and so, and as you said, Marlo can talk to some of the, the new benefits people are about to get, um, especially this year. How would you uh, articulate the benefits uh, with regard to traffic flow? Well, the, you know, this is a, a really large project that GDOT has undertaken for, like Natalie said, for several years we've been underway. And the goal of the project originally, and uh, as we continue, we're seeing the, the reality of that, is to um, reduce uh, traffic congestion and enhance safety and operations through the, 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 uh, the 285 and 400 interchange with those new ramps that we're building, new flyover ramps and bridges, all the and the CD lanes, all those things work together to help uh, with the goal of reducing congestion and improving traffic flow. What do you what do you anticipate the improvement specifically with four hundred? And how big of a priority was was that? Well it, it, it was also a significant uh, it was significant in GDOT's mind in programming the project. So those collector distributor lanes that we've mentioned more than once are lanes that are run parallel to the main uh, lanes on both 285 and 400. And they help with um, improving congestion and mobility by um, allowing all the entering and exiting to happen from those lanes instead of from the main lanes on both 400 and 285. So that collector distributor lane concept is applied to, to both 400 and 285. Tell me what, um, did you, I guess you work pretty closely with the perimeter CID, right? And uh, communicate with Ann, Ann Hanlon and her department pretty closely. How do you uh, assess the impact on the business community of this interchange? Or have you gotten into that uh, in great depth or I imagine you, you have? The department has worked diligently, especially in this area, because if you look sort of where this interchange sits right in the middle of, you have um, different communities, you have a vibrant business center, as you just mentioned, and you have the hospital center. So um, that adds to the complexity really of this project, not just the, the traffic woes that this interchange has seen because it needs to be enhanced. Um, so we look at it from traffic problems, but we also look at the varying communities that it is serving, going back to uh, the neighborhoods that surround it, the many neighborhoods that surround it, um, the bustling business center, and um, that that very important hospital medical center that we have right there. And so in moving this project for, forward, we at the department um, have been very diligent about our communications, um, our stakeholder outreach to these varying communities, um, specifically to your point of those business communities to making, making sure um, that we have sort of 
that list of stakeholders that we keep informed of, of small things like, um, like short road closures, short lane closures, um, blasting in the area, um, or, or longer things like it, the, the inevitable traffic shift that we'll have later this year where we will condense lanes to get bridges um, completed. So um, communication has been vital in this effort to make sure that all these different communities, including that very vibrant business community, uh, that they stay moving, um, that they feel that they're still able to uh, work at their highest uh, sort of capacity while we're building this project. And of course, we know COVID kind of threw a wrench into that, um, but so a lot of those businesses, their employees were able to work from home for a while. And so, um, you know, that was an, an added layer of complexity to our situation. But um, all in all, I think communication with that business community um, to deliver them, you know, no pain, no gain, and in the end we'll be delivering them better mobility to that business center, which is the ultimate goal for uh, mobility throughout the interchange. That area is becoming or has become a very key office market for the metro area um, with State Farm and the Concourse and all the other large companies that are headquartering there. Have you gotten a lot of favorable feedback from some of those in companies in terms of the project and the expected outcome and the results of, of your success? We have gotten a lot of favorable feedback. Uh, we do um, regularly um, reach out to the business community uh, surrounding the project. We have regular touch points where we give them updates on what the progress is and what they can expect to see coming. And, you know, uh, they, of course, you know, construction is difficult to, to live through while it's happening, but they're all very excited about what uh, mobility improvements are going to occur once the project is complete. One of the things about that everybody talks about today is people, more and more people are opting to work from home at least part of the time. And do you feel like this will change people's minds and make it a lot more easier to get to work with all the improvements that you're making in transportation. I've, I've lived here for 40 years and I've seen all the changes. I moved here uh, in 1980 when it was 1.4 million, I think. So I've seen a lot of changes and one of the changes, of course, is traffic, you know, how, and you know, people talk about, I, I lived in D.C., I grew up in D.C. and worked on Wall Street after college and I know what traffic's like. So. What, uh, how do you feel like that this is helping and encourage people to come to the office? I know a lot of companies would prefer people to come to the office more often. Do you feel like this is a major encouragement in that respect? Because it does, it will dramatically improve transportation. Well, we, you know, we pride ourselves in, in running those traffic figures quite often. and. Um, as, as much as sort of we go back to the pre-pandemic or those sort of initial days of the pandemic traffic levels, seeing that dip, uh, we have seen traffic already return to normal, uh, return to those, we have sort of shifting uh, peak time. So the AM is a little more condensed, PM uh, or AM is actually a little more spread out, PM is a little more condensed because People are more flexible when they can get to the office when they need to, but at the same time, everyone wants to get home at the same time. Uh, and so traffic volumes for the most part are, are back to where they were, uh, population increase. Uh, we're gonna continue to get people to move to Georgia. It's the number one state to do business in the nation, and that is attractive. You've got people who uh, bring their headquarters here. So population continues to increase, um, even though, uh, even though workers may not be driving into the office there are still trips being made on their behalf whether that's the amazon truck that's on the road delivering their goods their uber eats meal their grocery delivery so um while while there is more of an atmosphere that is conducive to working from home uh, that doesn't mean that road 
usage is down because uh, even though they're not going to and from the office, people are still using the road. And especially at this interchange, we have such a diverse sort of group of motorists. You've got local commuters who are coming. Uh, you've got people who are making short trips in and around sort of the Dunwoody, Sandy Springs area. And then of course you have what Georgia um, really has a lot of is that that tractor trailer that freight traffic so you've got freight traffic you've got local trips you have people traveling through the state through this interchange so a lot of different commuters with a lot of different needs at this interchange so unfortunately just because teleworking has become um sort of a a widely embraced uh, way to work now, it doesn't mean that congestion is any less on our roads uh, because of the things we are still using our roads for regularly, which is those freight trips, those deliveries, um, those trips that we still make just as people who live there. So still a lot of congestion. Let me ask you this question. What um, I know when you went into this project, you did an enormous amount of research, I'm sure. And um, how did you forecast the impact on lots of different business sectors, one of which is near and dear to my heart, and that is real estate, commercial and residential. Do you, did you, what kind of forecast did you come up with in terms of the impact of an interchange on that, that segment of the market? Well, a lot of, our, well, part of our uh, planning process is an environmental document, and one of the components of that is looking at indirect and cumulative impacts from the transportation facility. And so um, in that assessment, we do look at the type of development that's around the project, um, what uh, the, the communities that, that feed the, uh, those businesses as far as the employees and the, um, the types of uh, freight logistics that need to uh, service the businesses. So all of those things were looked at <clears throat> and when we began the environmental process uh, when the project was originally identified. And so we saw that there would be a benefit um, to not only the traveling public on the roadway, but then the surrounding business community and the residential community that the project also sits uh, near. What, what about... Um shopping you know you have perimeter mall right there and one of the that's a huge area of business for shoppers and restaurants and entertainment have what what did you work with closely with the perimeter mall people and how did they what are they forecasting in terms of the impact on on their business well, impacts to the, the shopping community, that, that's part of the, the business community that the project uh, feeds, that was looked at in that analysis. We also, you know, have coordinated some of our environmental commitments um, with uh, the mall traffic in mind, <clears throat> the highest shopping uh, season uh, to uh, minimize our impact to traffic getting to and from the mall. Well, one of the uh, things I did notice in my research was that you are planning a walking trail in, in, some, in connection with the interchange. Can you describe how that will, will work out? Well, that's, you know, a unique part of this project that, you know, I always enjoy talking about. Um, actually, when we went out early on with a lot of our public meetings, we did get input from the community that um, some type of bike uh, and pedestrian facility was desired. So uh, we actually partnered with the City of Sandy Springs and Path Foundation to um, add to the project a shared use path in the southeast quadrant of the interchange. So it will, it, it's not mixing with ve vehicular traffic, but it runs parallel to the roadway and will connect um, from Johnson Ferry Road to uh, uh, Peachtree Dunwoody Road. So that, you know, that's a hub <clears throat> that allows um, those bike head movements to tie to the Path 400 to the south 
and then plans uh, future bike and pedestrian movement in, within the city of Sandy Springs that would connect at Peach Street Don Woody. So it's very unique and it's a, it's a good um, partnership uh, to bring a, a component to a, a limited access project that you wouldn't typically see. Another partner that obviously was a key element of the equation is MARTA. And tell us uh, how you cooperated with MARTA people and how uh, that will be Im favorably impacted. Uh, while the project doesn't have um, lanes dedicated to MARTA, when you improve the mobility um, in the general purpose lane, you also benefit the transit. So um, any bus routes that MARTA or Greta would have that uses 285 or 400 would benefit from the operational improvements. Um, as well as uh, the fact that we are making some improvements to Peachtree Dunwoody Road and Glen Ridge Drive underneath 285, as well as Abernathy Road on 400. So any bus transit routes that use those roadways would benefit from having the um, improvements that this project is making. Long, long term, we're also working in this corridor um, with MARTA with um, the ATL Transit Agency and with the communities that sort of encompass the what we call the top end of the perimeter and up Georgia 400 to make sure uh, that as we expand our major mobility investment program, bringing those express lanes to the uh, to, to, to the top end of 285 and to Georgia 400 um, that we are working closely with MARTA to make sure that those projects keep in mind um, as they are being designed as they move forward um, that that they are they are open to transit options that they are including that they are not precluding um, and that we are always working with our transportation partners in that transit arena to make sure that those projects which will um, sort of at once this interchange is finished will be sort of the next phase of uh, mobility and safety improvement on the top end and up 400 um, bring that additional transit element um, likely in this in, in most of those cases in the express lane cases through something like bus rapid transit um, but that they are keeping in mind the additional need uh, that uh, the additional need for transit mobility uh, with these projects now, will people be able to use their Georgia Peach card for the express lanes, or how will that be affected? And tell us how to implement that usage. Right. Yes. So, so um, as 285-400 interchange projects comes to a close, you know, the, the purpose of that project uh, was to increase mobility and safety in this interchange um, to to give more options to people again who are taking those different trips and then the next phase of mobility improvements that will be coming along behind this interchange project um, are the next phase of the georgia express lanes which are 285 and georgia 400 and just like you said uh, the long-term vision for the express lane system in Georgia is to be able to take that peach pass, uh, go all the way around the top end of 285, up the ones that are currently in 75 or down um, to the ones uh, south of the city, to be able to move seamlessly through a network of express lanes that are separate from general purpose lanes. So there will still be that choice to use general purpose lanes or the express lanes with that one peach pass card. Uh, so giving that additional option uh, for mobility along uh, some of these heavily congested, heavily trafficked areas, especially ones that have freight, motorists, uh, that have all those different types of road users um, sort of using the road, but creating that extra level of congestion. Do you promote the Georgia Peach Pass? Uh, and secondly, what percent of drivers have that pass? And uh, is there a desire to increase the, the, people, the number of people who have it? Or tell us a little bit about the pass. 
Right. Well, so the Peach Pass goes through the State Road and Tollway Authority, uh, which is a transportation partner of ours, but is a separate um, agency from Georgia DOT. Um, but we certainly work together to ensure uh, that sort of we as the road builders then hand over the system to the State Road and Tollway Authority to manage that as uh, that express lane system. And so they, they would better have those numbers on how many people do, but we certainly um, help them um, in sort of increasing uh, Peach Pass users, especially when you look at the case of um, the, the toll lanes that go up 75, the Northwest Corridor toll, toll lanes. Uh, we saw almost instantaneous gains in the general purpose lanes in those speed times, um, in those trip times, when those express lanes opened because you are you're moving some cars out of this lane and, and putting them in in the express lane system so even if you're not choosing to use the express lane you're still getting benefits because it's giving more option uh, more mobility more lane miles um, and so while we we certainly as a transportation agency encourage that level of mobility encourage the use of peach pass uh, peach passes are specifically run out of the state road and tollway authority well, I'm talking with Ann Hanlon's department at the Perimeter CID. We're, she's, they're very high on these cars that talk to each other and uh, through various high technology people that um, Marlo probably knows all about with her background at Georgia Tech. And what impact is that or how does that interact with your plans at the, for this interchange? Is that an element in your thinking? Well, the connected vehicles and um, smart cars, that, that really was, uh, this project predated that push. Uh, so we're not under this current effort making accommodations for connected vehicles, but I'm sure there's always the opportunity to retrofit something as soon as that technology gets um, more broadly used and um, in this quarter somehow retrofitted. Okay, well, so tell us well about an interesting story. What was the biggest challenge in the, the process so far? I would say the biggest challenge was maintaining throughput for um, all the vehicles that use this interchange. So over 400,000 vehicles per day um, has been estimated travel through the interchange. And so when you have to also allow that traffic to continue while you're building new flyover ramps and you're building large retaining walls and new CD lanes, that's a challenge to uh, uh, keep maintain uh, a, a pace of construction as well as ensuring the safety, which is always uh, paramount of the traveling public and the workers who are, are building the project. So I would say that that it was the most challenging was maintaining the throughput. Also keeping in mind that because the project sits near three hospitals, and you have emergency vehicles coming in and out of there 24 hours a day. And you also have um, patients coming for visits and visiting loved ones who are in the hospital. Maintaining access for them was also important. So the most challenging part, I would say, is was maintaining the traffic while also building the project safety. How did you benefit uh, from the what you learned with the uh, 285 85 interchange and in, in the, in the construction of this interchange? That's been enormously successful, I know. Yes, that was an enor enormous success for GDOT, um, an emergency project that we were able to respond to quickly. Uh, th this was more uh, of a planned, longer range planned project. So it was a different type of project. Uh, so we uh, didn't necessarily um, have this, the same 
uh, the same challenges or um, accommodations for a project that uh, was planned to be constructed and nobody was expecting a fire on the 85 bridge. But um, so they're, they're different projects with different purposes. I'm, I'm sure everybody is wondering what's the next one in line? Would that be 75, 285? Do you plan or are you starting to think about that interchange yet? Because I've taken that during rush hour and that can probably benefit from a similar interchange. Well, as part, of, as part of the major mobility um, investment program, we have um, uh, the interchanges at I-285 and I-20 on both the east and the west side uh, are both slated for um, some significant improvements with mobility and safety upgrades. Um, those interchanges um, have recently, of course, been listed as some of the top bottlenecks. Um, we have a lot of interchanges in Metro Atlanta that sort of rank up in the top of some of the nation's bottlenecks. So um, the commissioner always describes 285 as a wheel. And if one of those spokes gets locked up, it sort of, uh, it, it hampers the turning of the wheel. And so sort of addressing some of these interchanges, um, especially the I-20, I-285 on both the east and the west side, which are heavily um, used by freight um, as they come through the city, um, is going to continue uh, with this project, with the 285-400 interchange, to get that wheel sort of well-oiled and moving again. Well, this city is slated to add as many new people as currently reside in the city of Charlotte in the next seven or eight years, I think. So, I mean, obviously, transportation is a key, key element in uh, our continued growth, and everybody wants to live here. I was out in Seattle a couple of weeks ago with my grandson, and nobody wants, I mean, that it's overcast <laughs> most of the time out there, a lot of rain, and believe me, it's, uh, it's a nice to come home to Atlanta with all the sunshine, but I know you guys are constantly looking at the growth and stats and what, um, are, to what degree is that a key element in your thinking every day? Well, GDOT is always looking at growth and what transportation needs are present because of the increased uh, growth of the metro area. And like Natalie has mentioned, there is a major mobility investment program that is uh, looking at another layer of improvement to mobility to aid those um, people that are moving to Atlanta because the weather is so nice and the opportunities are uh, here. Well, thank you very much for your work on this. This has to be an enormous um, focus of your attention from start to finish and it, I, you guys have done a phenomenally good job and I know um, I, I'm, I'm sure our citizens are, are very grateful for for all your work. Marlo, gl glowers like flowers, right? But glowers. It's, it's flowers. Flowers. Like flowers for the sea. I'm sorry. Yeah. And, uh, and Natalie Dale, we appreciate coming on the show and um, Keep us informed from time to time and on different changes and we, we feel free to come on and help people be in the know about what's going on with that interchange. Thank you very much for watching everybody. Have a nice day.